Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of SOS with Sonia Rasula. I am, of course, your host, Sonia Rasula. I'm really excited about today's episode because it features our very first international guest, and she's from my old hometown, Toronto, Canada. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, professional time now. So, Salima Vizram is the founder of Samara, a luxury vegan fashion brand, and it's just two years old. But last year, they already reached $1.3 million in sales. That is a very, very big deal. But she's pretty shy and doesn't really talk about how incredible and how big an accomplishment that is. So you will want to take notes as I provide insight on why the language and exact words that you use on your homepage and website are so crucial. I'm going to talk about ways to be more inclusive so that you're reaching more people, aka customers. And I'm going to give you lots of tactics for putting yourself in the spotlight, especially if you don't like attention. Let's dive into this episode now. So um, maybe we can start by just having you tell us your name, the name of the company, and what it is that you do. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Uh, my name is Salima. I'm the founder of Samara. And Samara is a 100% cruelty-free fashion house. Uh, we design everything for the minimalist, and it's our goal to really find good quality, but also sustainable and innovative materials um, to kind of reverse and change the fashion industry. I love it. And how long have you had the company? When did you start? I started two years ago. It was a pivot off of a previous company that I started, um, but Samara has been alive for two years now. Okay. So you're, you're a baby. <laughs> yes, I guess you could say that. <laughs> Well, you're a very, very impressive business for everyone listening. Um, the company looks so good. It is so sleek. The website is beautiful. The photography is stunning. So from a brand perspective, you are killing it. And I know that even though you're two years old, you are also a million dollar company, right? Last year, your revenue, I think was 1.3 million. Yes. <laughs> so that is a huge accomplishment. I just want everyone listening to understand that in just two years, this company is a million dollar company, which is massive. Um, so congratulations, first of all, to you on that. Thanks so much, Sonia. I think it's, um, it's crazy to hear that from other people because it's not something you go around telling people, but even just this moment is like, whoa, that's, yeah, that's actually true. <laughs> yeah. It's a really big deal. I don't know about in Canada, but in America, only 2% of female owned businesses reach the million dollar point. Only 2%. So you're in the 2%. <laughs> I actually read that when I was reading more about you. So congratulations to you too. <laughs> <laughs> so let's dive in because I know um, if people who are listening go to your website, which is samarabags.com, I think that a lot of the small business owners that are listening would be like, oh, wow, but this, this looks so sleek and like so professional. Like, why would she want help? But I know that you need help and I'm ready to help you. I've started to stalk you online and on Instagram. Um, but what's one of the kind of challenges that you're facing now? I mean, I think there's a lot. Um, the first would definitely be brand messaging. And just, I think it's one thing to have great product and to really um, have established this platform. But on the other hand, I think what's going to help us get to the next stage is really establishing that sense of community. And I think we have that now, but I think to get to that next milestone it's going to be how well can we connect with our customers um how well can we build a community around them and how can we truly be their best friends and be intentional about what we do mm -hmm. um so that's definitely one um i would say that's the main one really and i think that's our biggest challenge right now and obviously at a time like this there's such a huge opportunity and everyone's looking for a connection mm -hmm. and how can we use this time um, to really get to know our customers and to really figure out what our DNA is as a brand 
Um, because when we started, it's when you start a company, you're just running to the next day. You're not really thinking about, well, what do we stand for? And why are we here? And now that we've hit certain milestones, it's like, where are we actually going? And what's the best way to get there? Okay, perfect. Well, I am ready to help you. I'm excited. Um, so what I'm hearing is that you need help really with community. You have a huge following on Instagram. You're at over a hundred thousand followers. So you have a community for sure. But I think what you want to do is create like a deeper connection with them and then create a really, really brand loyal audience. Right? Exactly. And I think even as a fashion brand, it's, we don't want to just be a regular fashion brand because I personally don't, I see our company as a tool to create impact but not as a fashion brand. So if that's the case, then what do we stand for and how do we like really relay that to people? Yep. Okay, perfect. Well, right off the bat, there are some things that I was thinking about when I was looking at your website. I know that you had also mentioned in your email to us um, that storytelling, like you're, you're thinking a lot about community and involving community, but also it's like, trying to get across that story and really like your story. So I started looking at your website and I want to dive in to some specifics. So for everyone listening, I am now going to share the screen, but don't worry, you'll be able to hear everything that I talk about um, and understand it all. This is all universal knowledge that's going to help everyone. So I'm on your website right now samarabags.com. And it's absolutely stunning. You understand, obviously, colors, photography, tone, like it's just beautiful. So great job there. I do notice a couple things that I think could help improve sales, but also just improve that like instant recognition that you are like, you are a a huge business that people should be paying attention to following and starting to like get on board with. Mm -hmm. Um, the one thing I noticed was that nowhere on your website, do you have any press? And I'm assuming I could be wrong, but I'm assuming that you've gotten some good press or have gotten your bags in editor, beautiful editorial fashion shoots at some point over the last two years. Am I wrong? No, you're not. (laughs) Yeah. So I, So especially for you, because everything else is so spot on, I would love to see you have logos of some of that, some of the press that has either written about you or Mm -hmm. that you've been included in. And the only reason I say that, and it's not like there's such a difference between being a Canadian brand and an American brand, but the one thing that Americans are traditionally known for doing is showing off. And it's, it's not necessarily that they're showing off. It's that they're just proud of the attention that they've gotten. Mm -hmm. And so I encourage you to do that because what that tells consumers from all over the world, you never know where someone's discovering your website from. What it tells someone who's coming to your website and your homepage instantly is that you are recognized. Like you're recognized for your work and your quality and it helps them trust the brand a little bit more if they've never heard of the brand, for instance. So I would love for you to add, even if it's just the very bottom of the page, like a few logos of like people who've shown love to you or people who are talking about us and you, you mm-hmm. have those logos there. And I know you'll do it in a visually beautiful way. So <laughs> I already know you, you'll understand how to do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, don't discount how important seeing those logos are for people. Okay. The other thing that I would love for you to do is on every single product page, you auto populate reviews, which is great, Mm -hmm. but there's no place else that I see any sort of testimonial about how great your products are Mm -hmm. and the reviews are great. So (laughs) that's another thing where again, on the homepage, in a beautiful way that, again, I know you're going to have beautiful graphic design or have the quote on top of a beautiful photo. I have no doubt aesthetically you know what to do here, but I would love to see like a one sentence 
piece of praise for the company because you do have all these amazing reviews that you can see, but people aren't seeing them until they drill down all the way to a specific product page. And the fact is that people are probably going to go to your homepage first and you only have a few seconds to make that impression or they Mm -hmm. leave. So everything you can do to sell yourself on the homepage is best. Okay. Um, That's great advice. So those are two easy things. Like mm-hmm. you can do that in your sleep. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing that I wanted to talk about now is I, I basically put my journalism hat on when looking at your website. Cause at first when you sent in, I was like, this is amazing. She did $1.3 million in sales. It's a new company and the website already looks this good. So like what what could be wrong with the storytelling or what she's trying to accomplish. And it's not that anything's wrong, but I really, really, really dug deep on this one. And Mm -hmm. I started to analyze your copywriting. And I just want to throw this out Um, to all the listeners who are listening right now. She has such a beautiful image. Like right when you go to the homepage, it is just this beautiful photo of a woman and one of her bags. And the tones, like it's modern, it's clean, it's simple. Like you are like the poster child for what to do on a homepage. Like this is it. However, I'm going to throw this out there. Across that beautiful photo is a tagline that I, I understand where it came from. And it makes a lot of sense. It says design for the minimalist. And I believe that that's probably where your brand is born from. Like all the products are minimal right? Mm-hmm. In design. Um, the thing is, when you say design for the minimalist, what you're actually doing is excluding all the people who don't think of themselves as a minimalist. <laughs> it's so crazy because when you said that, it ma- like before you even said it, it made so much sense. And I was like, why did we actually do that? <laughs> right. Well, the thing is, it, like, it's funny because it, it's a, it's a very specific target audience. So the, the good thing about this is that you know exactly who you are as a brand. Your products are designed to be minimal and beautiful and clean. It doesn't mean that they're designed just for minimalists. So you can see how just the smallest tweaks in the choices of words that you use can make a big difference. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I would love for you to get rid of that <laughs> tagline just because you don't want to exclude anyone and your company is so much about inclusivity (laughs) that let's just include everyone right off the bat. (laughs) Yeah, I love that. That's great feedback. Yay. Okay. So now I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into your current storytelling. So I am going to go to the Our Story page. And again, such a great photo. Like Whoever does your photography, I don't know if you use a photographer, I'm assuming you're art directing everything. It's just like, it's such a great vibe that you have. Thank you. It's taken us a long time to get to that like aesthetic that we felt was right. Um, But yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's really, really beautiful. Um, Again, obviously you're going to know what I'm going to say because at the top of the page right there, it says design for the minimalist. So... (laughs) (laughs) So I would love for the first thing that people see not to necessarily be even like a tagline. It could just be a beautiful photo Mm -hmm. and then they scroll. You have to think about the way that a lot of people interact with your website and depending on your traffic, you can see this in analytics, but for unique markets, for instance, 40 to 50% depending on the month and a bunch of factors, but over 40% of people are viewing our website on their phones now. Mm -hmm. So people interact differently and they're scrolling even more and quicker because it's just a quick scroll with a thumb. So I feel like that photo can just be a big, beautiful photo and they scroll and then you see a headline or a title. Um, Okay. But I'd really like you to think about choosing some taglines or some headlines that describe the product more. And so this is where storytelling comes in, which is kind of what you've been talking about. Now that you don't have to run so much and you're not doing a thousand things every day, you're only doing 999, um, you, you have time to concentrate on like your brand story. Mm-hmm. So I love that your products are so minimal and simple and modern. I think like 
maybe thinking about words like that to describe what you do as opposed to being designed for a certain type of person will help. Mm-hmm. Um, and you also have this tagline that says, no living thing is harmed in the process, which I totally understand what you are communicating. Mm-hmm. But for someone who may have gotten to this page and doesn't know anything about your brand, it's a little, it's just a little confusing. And I feel like the average person needs to hear what's on the next line down below on the page, which is totally. luxury vegan fashion. <laughs> So I think that all of the stuff that is in this chunk, this paragraph that really does talk about who you are and what it is that you make, you need to pull out some of those words like luxury vegan fashion, minimalist purses and wallets, like eco-friendly, pull out the words, use a highlighter, you know, print this, use a highlighter, pull out the words that have impact and start to think about how you can use those words and taglines or... Don't create a tagline at all, but have beautiful photos with, you know, a graphic over it that just says like minimalist purses and accessories. Another one could just say like luxury vegan fashion, like try in different ways to tell your story than just this um, big chunk of text. Mm -hmm. Um, And then what I find interesting is that your story, your personal story is not until the very bottom of the page. And it's such a good story. (laughs) Well, I guess that's also something I wanted to bring up with you, which is like, that's where I think there is this, um, I, I find that it's one of my biggest challenges where I feel like there's so many different aspects I can touch on, but I don't know how to concisely put it all together to create that brand story. Mm Mm-hmm. So it's interesting, right? Because you have your about page split up into chunks so that you talk about kind of the company, you talk about how products are made, you talk about the eco aspect, then you talk about the fact that it's all female leadership. There's a lot going on there. I do like how you've split it up into chunks, but people don't have the attention spans like we used to. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so trying to get across your brand story in an elevator pitch is what you want to try to do. So they can scroll and read all these sections, which is great. This is for someone who becomes like a brand loyalist and you're going to create all those people. So don't you worry, but it's those people that are going to scroll all the way. Most people aren't even going to scroll half of the page. And so you really have to think about condensing all of these different things that you've said on the page into one concise chunk at the top or a few headlines. That's it. And then let people scroll. Um, So your story, I'm going to tell all the listeners who are listening is amazing because it's, it's similar to my story. And the thing is the press will eat this up. And so, you know, first of all, you are self-funded. You started with just $500, a production run of 10 bags. And then like, clearly you knew that you were onto something And then you started the company. Like that's like a dream come true from a business journalist perspective. Like everyone wants to meet you and tell your story, but your, that story is all the way hidden at the bottom of the page. So I want you to put that up higher too. Okay. (laughs) I will try and do that. (laughs) I know it's like, I'm stereotyping here, but it is a very Canadian thing. Like I'm both Canadian and American. So I, (laughs) I can say this with 100% confidence. When I was living in Toronto, when I was in Canada, the way that I talked about things that I was working on, I was much more timid. And um, it wasn't that I wasn't proud of what I was doing, but there there is this freedom that happened when I moved back Mm -hmm. to the States and I moved to Los Angeles. And it's not that people are showing off. Like that's the distinct difference it's not that people are showing off and they're just like, oh, look at the big house that I have. I have a better car than you. It's that like, they're proud of the fact that they've worked hard and that this is their story Mm -hmm. and they're okay with telling that story. So yeah, totally. I definitely feel like I need to be more comfortable with that. Yeah. I mean, this is crazy to me that you're a million dollar company in (laughs) just two years, in your second year ever of having a business, you hit a million dollars. It's, 
it's crazy to me that that isn't like, I, I would be splashing that everywhere. Yeah, I feel like, um, I don't know if you've read about what we did before, but with that, it was so much easier to talk about the story because I felt like it was just a, a story that was easy to be shared. But it's funny because now I don't feel like I, I should be sharing that story as much, which is so, it is crazy. Yeah, it is. You need to tell your history, your background, and then be proud of what you've done. <laughs> so, um, so this is amazing. So we're going to have you update the copy on your website. Small little tweaks and changes. Super, super easy to do. So on your about page, there's this section that says designed by women for women. And the, the way that women is spelled is W-O-M-X-N, which is a very amazing modern <laughs> um, take, I guess, on women, which is to include everyone, not just like, how would you, how would you even say this? How would I say this? Suddenly I'm like, my brain is not able to think. Um, it includes all people, really. And so what I find interesting about this phrase on your website, it's very open-minded and very progressive, which is amazing. And it's very inclusive, right? It's very inclusive. But when you look at a bigger, per if you look at a bigger perspective and you look at all the consumers that are out there, I actually don't think a lot of people would actually know what that means. Mm -hmm. And then that means that it's exclusive, not inclusive. And it also makes someone maybe potentially feel like they don't, like they're stupid for not knowing what that is. So in some weird way, what you're trying to do is communicate that you are a very inclusive company. But mm -hmm. the way that you've done it, just copywriting wise, actually excludes people because it also says like, designed by women for women, what that 100% says is that it's mm -hmm. not for men, mm -hmm. which as, you know, as a human being, great. As a company and a business who's trying to sell products, um, I think it's much smarter to say that you are a woman-owned company, a woman-powered company, mm -hmm. that all the designs are by women. But when you say that something is designed for women, you're then excluding men. Yeah. And I think where you could grow and scale your, your company is by becoming one of those companies that is so covetable. Like every, all the girls on Instagram, all the women on Instagram, like everyone wants your bags which then means you start getting into people telling men, dads, cousins, boyfriends, husbands, that they want one of your bags as a gift, mm -hmm. right? So just throwing that out there, I think it's really great to be a progressive company and to show how amazingly inclusive and, and progressive you are. But you just have to, again, be really careful with the exact way that you say that. Totally. This is so helpful. It's like things that you don't, when you're, when you're in the, in the midst of everything, you, you're playing so many roles and you write whatever you think is like, it makes sense to you. But it's so interesting to have someone else kind of take a deep dive into the website, which no one has ever done before. But it, everything that you're saying makes so much sense. Okay, good. Good. I'm glad. Because I loved, like when I saw that, I was like, oh, this is awesome. Like already this is a Canadian company, so I know they're just going to be super progressive and awesome. <laughs> but to see that, it, it really is forward thinking, right? Like it shows that you're very conscious of other human beings and that there are people in this world that weren't so-called born a woman, but that are women. Like it's, it's an amazing perspective. Um, but again, yeah, you just want to, you also want to get men to buy your products. Totally. Yeah. And also like, who's to say that also a man wouldn't love like that, the, the envelope, the leather envelope case. Like it's now thinking about it. We actually do have some men who carry our minis and stuff. So you're there totally you right. <laughs> Here you go. So show off more about the fact that you are a female founder and that you started the company and that you, you know, you did it all 
on your own. I think that's another really key piece is that the, the same way that you started following me somehow, I don't know how you discovered me, but you started <laughs> following me. And, you know, earlier on in the call, you were telling me that, you know, you love the fact that I help small businesses and I'm mm-hmm. an inspiration. And the thing is, you are that to your community now. You just might not know that. And the 100,000 followers that you currently have, I guarantee you, the more that you start to share your personal story, that is the part of the brand story. And so the more you share that, I think you're going to see an upswing in followers and loyal brand followers and even sales because people are going to want to support your brand because of you, not even necessarily because of the bags. What's the best way then to start putting yourself out there more? Well, so we, we watched one of your videos actually just before um, the one where you were talking about COVID and Kenya mm-hmm. and we were so impressed. We were like, wow, this is a great oh. <laughs> video. Like this is amazing. So you clearly aren't nervous to be in front of the camera, which is what most people struggle with. And if you are, it didn't come across. I mean, that did take me like 15 tries. So, <laughs> so but that's the, dirty, that's the dirty truth that no one talks about. How many times do I have to do a take before I'm like, oh, the dog barked in that one. Oh, this looked terrible. Oh, there was something in my teeth. You only see the end result. So don't worry. Everyone does the same thing as you. <laughs> um, I think that your best strategy is to start um, like – how often do you get photographed? I'm just curious. Like twice a year. And, and like a random, like I'll just jump in if I need a quick headshot. <laughs> right. And how often are you, like, I don't know how often you're shooting your products. Usually once a month before COVID. Okay. So you were doing once a month. So you were doing shoots because I'm assuming that it's, your products, you've got new products and new colorways launching. And so you're getting all of that product photography. Mm -hmm. And then are you also kind of doing the lifestyle photography, which is all these beautiful shots um, Mm -hmm. and stuff for your Instagram. So I'm going to your Instagram channel right now, which is stunning. I love the, the, the color tone and the palette and the mood that you guys decide decided to go with. It's perfection. Thank you. So everyone listening to this episode, you need to go visit the Instagram because for all those business owners that struggle with Instagram and are like, I don't know why I'm not getting followers or why I'm not, oftentimes they're not understanding that their photography is not up to par and Instagram is a visual social media network. Mm -hmm. Your photography is amazing. So kudos on that. Um, But yeah, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. And like, where are you other than that video? You know what I mean? Like, so what I'm going to throw out is this. You need to probably post about you. And this is going to make you feel uncomfortable at first. But honestly, I think that like every nine posts needs to be about you. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't always have to be necessarily a picture of you, mm-hmm. but this is, this is like, there was a turning point with unique markets. We used to always just post about products and mm-hmm. vendors. And at some point, um, years ago, you know, I started to realize like people wanted to hear more from me and about me. And at first I was like, that seems weird. I have my own channel, like Sonia mm-hmm. Restola. Like, why would they need to do that on Unique Markets? But I started to realize that for business, people also want to not just know about the business, but they want to know about the people behind the business. Yeah. So I want you to honestly, when I say every nine, there's a, there's a reason for that. And it's because when you're on Instagram and you don't know about a feed and you don't know about someone and you go to check them out, usually what you do is you just scroll a teeny bit and you just judge them on those first few rows of photos. And when someone looks at your feed instantly, I already know, love the product. I'm already on board. Right. Mm -hmm. But if there's, if there's more personal photos of a person 
that's not like a model photo of someone holding a product. So clearly yeah. probably more about someone. That's probably going to be the photo that I'm going to click because I'm going to be like, oh, this is interesting. Is that the owner? Is this, you know, and then they're going to read more about you. You can also do behind the scenes photos that are just as beautiful as all of your lifestyle shots. Yeah. But it shows you behind the camera. It might show the whole team. The photographer can capture all the different people at the photo shoot or even, you know, how it is, um, like where you're shooting, the locations that you're shooting. Like yeah. there's more to the story than just the product. Totally. Do you think um, Instagram posts are better than stories or should it be a combination of the two? Yeah. So I love stories. The reason I love stories is those are, those are the loyalists. Those yeah. are people that are going to talk about you and forward those stories to their friends, which is interesting. Like regularly I have this, I have about like on my personal, I feel like I always have about 750 people watching my stories every day. Mm -hmm. 750 hardcore uber fans right those are 750 people that i know i can rely on if i need to launch something and talk about something so for you if you launch a new product and you talk about it on stories the people who are watching your stories are probably going to watch you regularly because the way that the algorithm works is the more you interact with someone that's who gets fed into those first highlight reels when you log in so the people who watch your stories are definitely the ones that you want to entertain, inspire, keep them active and present within your brand, mm -hmm. even though they might have bought a bag like a year ago and don't plan to buy something else, maybe for another few months when they get like the bonus at the end of the year or what have you, but they're activated enough in your brand that they're checking in on you every day. So I think that you have to do stories. Absolutely. Absolutely you can keep in mind that it doesn't have to be as curated. That's the amazing thing about stories. Yeah. Your feed speaks for itself. Your feed is your brand Bible, right? It's, it tells everyone everything about you. Stories can be way more relaxed, way more behind the scenes. They can be funny. They can be whatever they want. That, it's more about personality there. And then the thing that I wanted to talk to you about was IGTV. <laughs> And so I love, and this is the one that we watched, the one about you providing meals in Kenya, which was just such a great love, love, love that video. Thank you. <laughs> um, and, you know, what's interesting when you, when you look at your IGTV videos, look at how many people are watching them, right? Tens of thousands or thousands, if anything, so, but you only have four. So yeah. To me, that says that clearly the videos that you're putting out there are having an impact and they're getting shared and the algorithm is on your side. So I'm not sure why you're not doing more IGT videos or like any videos. <laughs> is there a reason? Yeah, it's just, it's because it's a video, it just feels like it's a, it's an investment, you know, it's like, it takes a few hours. You have to plan it out. Um, we we're really struggling with that because it's not like you can just take it on a whim and forget about it. It's like you have to actively decide to film a video. Yes, but... <laughs> but you're right. We should be doing it more. And it's yeah. been something that we've been heavily considering. Um, but then it comes to, should you get someone to produce it or edit it for you? Or should you do it yourself? Um, yeah. How much should you let it take away from the day-to-day -day operations, especially because we're a small team? Mm -hmm. So I would say this. I mean, is there another way that you're reaching 15,000 people, 18,000 people? With, not for free. <laughs> not, right. Not for free. Not that creating videos is free. I should point that out, depending, right, on yeah. if you're going to have them produced or not. But I see most people using IGTV in a much more casual way. I think that you can either spend, you can do what we do here with the podcast. Like it's about efficiency. So mm -hmm. if you want them to be professional and beautiful and have a certain look and tone and feel, then plan one day 
where you literally record eight videos. You know, mm. you're going to take literally half an hour to do each video and you have them yeah. all planned ahead of time. Like you're utilizing that team and that space in one day you have the eight videos filmed. Doesn't mean that they're edited, but you it's have smart. it all filmed. So I would do something like that. If they, if you're okay with them not looking so perfect, mm -hmm. I really think that you should try I'm going to encourage you to try and go ahead and film your own. Like, yeah, you know, a behind the scenes, a look at how you come up with a design for a bag. You've got the photography. I know for sure that you probably have a notebook that is filled with like your doodles and your designs. You probably have um, all the samples of all the different uh, color options. Like, and, you yeah. know, I mean that you're using them, but you have all this great visual stuff. There's no reason why you can't yourself, even just using your phone, you don't even need a professional camera for this, that you can't put that story together and then film yourself again and cut that using a, a basic app. Like mm -hmm. it's harder. I, I know it's harder and it's uncomfortable for you as the business owner to be turning the camera on yourself and doing that, but it's so much easier that way. And then like you could be doing a video a week. Yeah. Like, there's no reason why you're not doing that. Maybe you've just inspired me to start. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Like, algorithms have changed. So, like, at yeah. the beginning, people, you know, yeah, you were getting, hold, when is this video from? I'm just going to click on it for a second. Right. So, it was last fall. So, since last fall, lots of other people have been doing IGTV. So, they're not, like, pushing those up to the top on the Discover page as much. So that's another thing to think about. Like you don't need to spend money and energy producing these videos that are taking a while to produce. If you start doing DIY videos yourself and telling your own story, you're still going to get thousands of viewers, but it's going to be something that you can do yourself in yeah. a day, in an hour. Okay. <laughs> we will start. We, I will try. <laughs> I know. And the thing that is hard is that like, you know, you need to do it. You yeah. hear me telling you and you're like, okay, we're going to start, we're going to start doing it. The thing that actually is going to get you to execute is creating a list of videos to do because mm -hmm. even just being like, oh my God, it's been a month. Sonia told me I needed to do a video, still haven't done a video. And then you just like get, you're getting in the way of yourself. Yeah. If you, after this call, sit down and write out four ideas for videos. Then you at least have four ideas for videos. You don't have to think about it. And then you can just do them one by one at your own time. Great idea. <laughs> I'll send you the list when I'm done. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> one of them, one of them is going to be how I, in just two years, became a million dollar company. <laughs> May, we'll see about that one. <laughs> um, okay. So we've talked about your website and how you can tweak copywriting to help the brand story. Um, and we've talked a little bit about brand story. We've talked about social. I think that when it comes to your overall brand story, your gut is completely right on. That instinct of yours, which is now like we have a little time to slow down. I want to really start to concentrate on our brand story. So again, you are part of that brand story. I, mm -hmm. I don't have to hammer at home because you, you've already heard me do that. Um, so I want to see more of you in that brand story. But the story of starting small and growing and the story of being eco-friendly and the story of um, being a company that doesn't hurt animals uh, these are all really important things and topics, and I don't see that also conveyed a lot. Um, I'm sure you talk about it on Instagram, but it would be nice to see it called out in a more obvious way visually so that when people mm -hmm. are scrolling, um, it's, it's there. I'm also clicking to your website now. Can I also just say, this is so helpful. It's almost like cathartic to just, yeah, to just have someone else be like, this is what you need to do. And it's, <laughs> it seems so clear now. 
yeah, well, that is what I'm here for. I'm here to just point out the obvious. It's obvious <laughs> to me. Uh, maybe it's not obvious to everyone else, but these little tweaks are, you're going to get to 2 million in like a month. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So I'm back on your homepage. I'm going to share the screen again. I'm back on your homepage and I want to point something out about the storytelling because that was, goes back to one of your top questions. So we're going to get rid of the design for the minimalist because that excludes people. Mm-hmm. People are going to arrive at your website and they're going to see all of these beautiful, covetable products. Like I literally want every single thing that you guys make. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's fantastic. But like you said, I know your gut already knows this. There's no story on the homepage. Mm -hmm. The story is at the very bottom of the page where it says a 100% cruelty-free fashion house designed for the minimalist. So obviously you're going to tweak that copy, Mm -hmm. but that story should be higher up. (laughs) It shouldn't be because people aren't going to reach the bottom of the page. That's, I keep saying this in every single episode, but you have two seconds. You actually don't even have two seconds. It's like 1.5 seconds, which you, I can't even figure out how you even wrap your head around 1.5 seconds. That's like, I think you, it takes longer to blink, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> so I want you to put like the fact that you're cruelty free, you know, like that needs to be up there. Now, granted, it doesn't have to be up at the top if you don't want it to be. You have that beautiful image right now. And then you're very, very smart because you need to take it back to the product. At the end of the day, you sell bags. But it doesn't have to be all the buttons of products. Yeah. So I personally would say test it out in a few different ways. Like, you know, try a few different web designs of the homepage where maybe you scroll and you pass four products and then you see a block that's a beautifully designed block that that talks more about your story. I definitely want you to put on the homepage and I don't care what your opinion is. You're going (laughs) to, I just want you to do it at the very, and it can be at the very bottom. I'll give you this one. It can be at the very bottom, but at the very bottom of the homepage, I want it to talk about the fact that you are a female founded, like self-started company. And that's going to click off to the about us page where people can read more. Cause I guarantee you there are women and girls out there who will be like, Oh, this is so amazing. And they'll click and they'll read more about you. And the one thing that I don't know if I've ever talked about this on first season of the podcast or on this season, but there's one fact about consumerism and it's if you make an emotional connection with someone, Mm -hmm. even if they literally do not need a bag, they'll purchase a bag because they want to help you and they want to be part of your story. And they're going to treasure that bag. It's not just because they bought a pink bag. It's because they bought a bag from an amazing woman who grew up in Kenya, moved to Canada, started this company with $500. And that brand story then gets told to that person's coworkers, that person's friends. Like the brand story is what sells the bags. And so you're absolutely right when you say like, we need to create more brand story and get it out there. Yeah, you are so right. (laughs) It's it's true. People want to feel like they're not just buying from a company and Mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we're not just another fashion company. So it all ties into that too. Yeah, absolutely. And I would love to see from a consumer perspective you're going to tell everyone much more about you, about the background of the company, about your background. But on the website, I think it would be so interesting and social media to mm-hmm. see photos of the people who are making the bags, to see close-up photos, detail shots of like a sewer sewing the bag. That's part of the storytelling too. And often people, those photos are like the last thing people want to document. So those photos are always like not great. I have no doubt that the photographers that you use who capture the products in such a beautiful way, they're going to have that eye to capture those behind the scene moments that make them really special and beautiful too. You know, what's really funny. I keep hearing the sound of a streetcar go by. I I love it. It, 
it makes me think of Toronto. <laughs> oh, I miss Toronto. Yeah, it's, it comes by every like two minutes and it's pretty annoying in times when you're trying to record a podcast. <laughs> I knew that that sound was from the very beginning. And I was just like, every time I heard it go by, I was like, oh, people are on the streetcar going places. <laughs> and once all this is over, you should definitely come back to Toronto and visit for a few weeks. It would be so nice. I want to so badly. And also one thing that I really miss, um, all the Americans listening. In Canada, there's this culture of like cottage country. And it, it's not like, for just for rich people the thing is like in the u.s people have cabins and usually it's because they're like pretty well off or like they like people go to the hamptons and it's like well billionaires go to the hamptons like the average person in america does like there's not a cabin culture here or a cottage culture so that's something that i really miss about toronto too is that like you can just drive for an hour and you're in like you're surrounded by trees and a lake and you can just like oh it's amazing I miss that a lot I can't wait I hope we get to do that a little bit this summer right Uh, well one day I will be able to come back to Toronto and I'll be excited and I'll be able to see you in person I know then we can go to cottage country together (laughs) (laughs) that would be amazing so we only have a few more minutes, so I know I've thrown a lot at you already. Is there one more thing that you want help with? Um, so you know how you said when, like with the personal story, press is something that would be super interested in telling it. What's the best way to go about pitching to press? Is it usually through warm leads, through people you know, or... With Solar, when I was telling that story, it was so much easier. And it felt like the moment we got the first one, the rest just came. Um, But with Samara, it's definitely been a lot harder. And maybe it's because it's not been a priority. But what's your advice on getting press? Yeah. So so your first company that you started for everyone listening, um, it was a bad company also, but it was a nonprofit right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it had, and it had a really, really great angle when, if you're a press person, you're like, oh, I love the angle of that company. Um, You have just as strong an angle with this company. And again, it's all about you. I really, I really believe that. Um, It's, it's really amazing that in two years you hit a million dollars like that. Honestly, I keep talking about it, but it's, (laughs) it's really, really impressive. So I would say warm leads are always great. If you have connections to someone or however it is that you can reach out to them, like that's always great. But to be perfectly honest, any journalist getting this story, I would think would be interested. So it's just doing the hard work of sitting down and finding everyone's contact information and sending out an email. It's, it's that easy, but what's hard about that is sitting down and doing it. Most people don't want to sit down and do that. But if you do that, is it more like, I, so this is my story. I started with $500 and we grew it to this much. Yes. Is that the angle that we should go in with? Yes. So this is, this is another area where most entrepreneurs who consider themselves to be small business owners. So they like, they don't think that they're worthy. And also they think that they need to have a fake publicist or a, like an address that's like PR at samarabags.com. Like, no. Um, I mean, again, as a, I can't speak for editors out there, but Mm -hmm. if I'm an editor who's constantly looking for cool new companies to write about, and also I know that, as a publication, we want to be more representative and inclusive. And so that means um, writing about women and that means writing about women of color. So like, honestly, you check both boxes there and then million dollar company, three boxes. That is, that is the, if I got that email, I'd be like, perfect, got, got the story. So you just need to reach out as yourself, I believe. Mm-hmm. And it's like, hi, I'm the founder of this company. I started it two years ago in this, in just the second year of business, I was able to reach a million dollars, like 1.3. You go ahead and tell your story. Um, The thing to keep in mind and for everyone listening right now, these 
pitch emails to editors need to be very short, you're not telling your life story. They can go to your website and click to your About Us page, and they're going to read all about you and all about your mission, and they'll understand who you are and what you do by doing that. Mm -hmm. You just need to captivate them enough in that email so they're like, I need to click to go to the website to see what it is that this woman does. So two paragraphs at the most, and each paragraph should only be a few sentences. So, you know, you introduce yourself, you talk about you know, why you love the magazine or the fact that whatever it is that they wrote about last week, you really enjoyed, or that you really enjoy that they have made an effort to write about amazing female founders. Like you have to have a point of commonality and kind of like kiss up to them because everyone likes to be kissed mm -hmm. up. To them. Um, so do that. And then the second paragraph is here's who I am and what I do and why it's impressive. And then you give the link to your website and you send that off to as many people as you can. And again, this is a numbers thing where it's just sitting down at your desk and doing it. It's just that yeah. people, people never do it. So I would say like write the 20 publications that are your dream publications, find the right editors to email, and you can do that usually online. Sometimes you can find them through Twitter. Like it, there's ways to stalk editors now online, find that information and send those off. And you know, if you send 20, I guarantee you some of those people are going to write back to you. Okay. I will try that. <laughs> yeah. You just got to do it. You just have to do it. <laughs> That's so helpful. Thank you so much, Sonia. Yeah. This has been so great. First of all, I, had, I hadn't heard of your brand. So when you emailed in, I was so excited and I was like, ah, oh, this, everything about this company is just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and then to find out that you're Canadian, that, that took it over the top. <laughs> yeah, and that we're going to meet in person soon. It has to happen now. <laughs> and I should mention that this is the first international guest. Wow. Yes, you are our very first international guest on SOS. So congratulations. <laughs> what an honor. That's so nice. I'm super excited to hear the rest of the season. I think it's going to be amazing. It's really good. Like every single guest has been so amazing, including you. And so I'm really happy and proud of this season. <laughs> well, I'm proud of you too. <laughs> Aww, thank you. Okay. Well, it's been so nice to talk to you. I can't wait to watch the changes happen online. And I'm really looking forward to hearing back from you about how hopefully things have changed. Sounds good. <laughs> this was amazing. It was honestly like I've considered so much like I was like I don't know who to talk to and I feel like there's all these thoughts in my head and I didn't expect that this would be that so thank you of course yay I'm so glad I could help <laughs> it's been amazing um, and thanks to your whole team hey we before you go calling all small business owners nonprofit pioneers and savvy side hustlers if you're looking for the smarter way to market your idea, small business, or cause online, Constant Contact has your back. Whether you're just getting started and need a simple logo maker, or easy way to build your website or online store, or if you're ready to step up your online marketing game with customizable email campaigns, social media, and search marketing tools, Constant Contact has everything you need to achieve online marketing success all in one place. Paired with practical advice from their award-winning team of marketing experts at every step of the way, Constant Contact helps you achieve real results fast. For an exclusive deal, visit constantcontact.com unique to get started today.